It's your girl, Queen, reminding you guys to connect with us on patreon.com slash tmgfam, where you can get full exclusive access to all content, bonus videos, behind the scenes, vlogs, lives, and so much more. What's good, TMG fam? It's your boy, L, and I'm back with another reaction video, man. How y'all feel? Welcome to the channel. Look, welcome back, man. This is part two of the uh, Kamikaze interview with Eminem and Sway, man. All right, so if you haven't checked our our uh, breakdown of part one, go back to the channel and check that out, man, before you come to part two. But everybody seems to be waiting on this part right here, man. That's all that was throughout the comment section. So we're here now. Let's get to it, man. How do you describe your relationship with Joe Budden? I mean, listen, me and Joe Budden aren't, you know, we're not friends like that. We're not like, we didn't go to the same fucking high school or something, you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? So I get that part. But when I'm out here flying around to different places and doing interviews and trying to use my platform to pump up Slaughterhouse every chance I get. See what he did there to pump up. Like when you, when you, you good, you good, you good to pump up Slaughterhouse. That, I saw what he did there. This isn't doing interviews and trying to use my platform to pump up Slaughterhouse every chance I get. And you're using your platform to fucking trash me. And I'm one of the things that keeps this shit moving. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So you're doing something, you got a voice in hip hop. So you actually could be affecting this ship a little bit. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Because you don't owe me nothing. But I've never got in a fucking interview and been like, Joe Button shit is fucking trash. Mm -hmm. That last album he put out is fucking trash. So that's, that's kind of the attitude I took to this whole album. Kamikaze is like, all right, what if I give everybody my opinion about them? But look, I want to talk about Slaughterhouse because uh, there's a lot. Slaughterhouse. And I was, I'm a Slaughterhouse fan, bro. I'd be sitting here lying to you if I said I wasn't, bro. I was, I was, I was like parading, campaigning on the front lines for Slaughterhouse, man, because when, when they formulated that group, bro, you had Royce to 5'9", you had Crooked Eye, you had Joe L. Ortiz, and you had Joe Budden, bro. And it it was like, like one of their songs said it was like equivalent to, to Voltron. You know what I'm saying? It they, they formed, bro, it was, to me, it was just something that, that could have just been incredible. And I hear a lot of people make the comparisons um, to uh, Benny and West Side Gun and all of them, it, it, they made the comparison that that's how they should have been. You know what I mean? So, man, I was excited for them. I thought that they would be around for years to come and we would just get some incredible music. So when they when they broke up and dismembered, bro, that I was one of the fans that felt like, man, I, I felt like I, I just got shortchanged on something that could have been great. Something that could have been great. Out of, including myself, people that really feel like the Slaughterhouse saga was unfinished. Mm -hmm. You know, I know there's a Glasshouse <clears throat> album that was pretty much completed but never released, right? Where we had left it about two years ago was everybody came in and different, some, some of the guys in the group picked certain beats, some of the guys didn't feel those beats, so they liked the other beats. And there was like, there was definitely enough songs to put an album out, but for the most part, it wasn't a complete picture because everybody wasn't on the same page of what their favorite songs were. So I thought they were gonna go back, go back home, regroup, and try to make a few more songs. I didn't hear anything from that. And then in, at that point, I started getting really deep into revival. You know, I was recording every day. So a couple months go by. And from what I understand it to be, what I was told, I didn't hear this firsthand. But okay. Joe said, Slaughterhouse ain't hot right now. We don't have a buzz. We need to put out a mixtape. From that point, everybody started branching out. Royce went and did his album, Prime. Like, everybody started doing their own kind of solo shit. So I thought they were just happy with that. And right there, you know what I'm saying? That goes to show what it sounds like to me right there, M saying, is there's a breakdown in communication somewhere. Somewhere that's like, because 
he just kept constantly saying in that little clip right there, I thought, I thought, I thought. So somewhere the communication was was broken where nobody knew what was going on. You know, everybody is scattered out. People are trying to figure out. It's like the communication was just not not there. It wasn't there. And I believe that's a big part of what led to possibly what possibly what led to the the uh, dismemberment of, of Slaughterhouse. You know what I'm saying? Like they just wanted to maybe work on their own projects for a while and we would come back and visit this or whatever. When we made the first Slaughterhouse album. The Welcome to Our House. The Welcome to Our House. That was another album that I felt like, holy shit, people literally just trashed this. They trashed this album. There was a huge fucking backlash of, oh man, this ain't what we want to hear. It sounds too polished and all that shit. Like, you're not, listen, you're critiquing these guys who are fucking wordsmiths. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, so you're, there's, look, there's a certain type of person that, oh man, I like, I only like the beats. There's a certain type of person that will lean towards lyrics more. There's a certain type of person that will lean towards a voice more. They like better. You know what I'm saying? Like, everybody leans towards, towards their own thing. But I was just like, holy shit. Because to me, the beats were crazy on that album. And only thing I did was added my little touch of like sprinkling music in these tracks and mixing them to try to bring out, you know, the production a little bit. Um, which I don't even know if I did any actual beats on there on the first album, but but all I heard was the backlash that it was too polished. Yeah. So we said, okay, let's do another album, and then you guys do what you want to do with it. Which is kind of we left the ball in their court kind of thing. So I didn't want to touch it in the sense of like other than give my opinions on songs. I didn't want to touch it I didn't, with my production because I felt like. If, if, what if that is the reason yeah. that they didn't sell albums? I don't want to hinder that, you know what I'm saying? So we gave him another album and next thing I know, I hear Joe talking about who got that money, who, who got what money? Mm -hmm. Like. He did say, I saw a clip that he put up an interview with him and Crooked that he felt like that maybe, perhaps, like he alluded that you and Paul got majority of the money. There, but, the, but the album, I hate to say this because I think the guys are super fucking talented, but the album didn't do much to even recoup the first budget. Then we spent hundreds of thousands of dollars on the second album that never came out. What money mm -hmm. didn't you get? I it's another thing, man. Groups, groups are always tough. Groups are always going to be tough, man. You come together and... You know, you guys have what you think to be deemed as the common goal, common objective, you know, what you guys want to accomplish. But take, for instance, Slaughterhouse or any group. If it's a four man group, you got four different opinions, you got four different personalities. And even though you think you have four different, you have four of the same goals, everybody's goals are on the line, man. Everybody's feelings are different. Times change, things happen, circumstances, life hits you. You know what I'm saying? So it's it's like it's hard to keep a group together. You know what I mean? It's 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 challenging. Go back through hip hop history. Go back through your hip hop history, man. More often than not, groups break up, and it's because of money, it's because of ego. It's because of communication, which we talked about earlier. You know what I'm saying? It's it's hard, bro. It's hard. And then trust. Trust is a huge factor, you know? And if something happens and the trust is broken or, or you know what I mean? It's hard to keep that, that engine going. And I, I think that's possibly also what led into that those situations with M and Slaughterhouse or M and Joe or however you want to put it. I don't know if I made a fucking dime off Slaughterhouse. I don't care if I made nothing. I believed in them. So I, you know, I wanted them to, I wanted them to be huge, man. I really did. I, I wanted a group that lyrical to fucking just 
bust through everything. You know what I'm saying? And it definitely hurt my feelings a lot when the album didn't do good, the first album. It was just like, fuck, man. Like, when, when, when we got CeeLo on the hook of the uh, My Life song, I was like, yo, this, is, this might be out of here. What, what was the meaning behind the line when you said the last hit, you, I mean, I'm paraphrasing, the last hit you got was with your ex chick? That was what that was. What's that? That was a tap. Just a tap? It was a tap, but it was also saying that, that his, his uh, alleged domestic abuse mm -hmm. things or whatever, which I'm not gonna get into, but, but I feel like, I feel like the reason I had to do that is because, like I said, there's a, there's a, there's a fine line between saying, you know what, this guy's really been cool to me. He's helped me out and tried to help out on many occasions. So I'm not gonna go in on Untouchable like that. I'm gonna say it ain't for me. How do y'all feel about that? That's, that's an important stopping point right there. How did y'all feel about that? The, the, the uh, clip or the show Everyday struggle when when Joe was asked about um, the song that came out, and he went in on on M. How did y'all How did y'all feel about it? Was it? I felt like because I I was a I was watching Everyday Struggle at the time, and um, I kept seeing Joe trying to. In the beginning, if you remember, every time he was asked about it, he kind of dipped away from me, kind of dipped away from it. He didn't really go in. He kind of hesitated in a minute. And academics started calling him out on his biasness about his opinion on M's, M's music, the track list and everything like that. He just, academics kept calling him out on it. And then finally, it dropped. And we all know Joe as well. Joe adds a lot of sauce to stuff. If, if you sitting there thinking Joe don't go in for the views or for the attention or to create a moment, then you're sadly mistaken. And that's what I felt like happened. I felt like Joe went in, but he went in super crazy to because he knew it was going to garner a lot of attention. And I felt like he added all that sauce on it. You know what I mean? I don't feel like that was... That was his true, true, true response to the track. I'm not crazy about it. Whatever, whatever. But to, to be the worst song you've ever heard in your life? Have you listened to your own shit? Or do you not listen back? Because if that's the worst fucking song you've ever heard in your life, I don't know. Uh, Yes. Oh, it's interesting. So we'll never see that Glass House album, probably, as far as you know. I don't know. I, I, I don't have the answer to that. I, uh, I, I want to just make it clear, though, that aside from the Joe shit, I think that Slaughterhouse is one of the best rap groups ever to ever happen. But that being said, I... I I wish their first album would have connected yeah. to more people than it did. I don't, I don't, to this day, I still don't, me and Paul, I'm like, how, how, what the fuck happened? You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> but look, man, everybody's not going to like everything you put out all the time. So that, that was a dream team of MCs, though. And I think a lot to what you're saying um, in regards to why aren't people reacting to these wordsmith is that's how we came up, you know? And honestly, what people may not realize is that's what really separated hip hop from R&B, rock and roll, and other genres was our ability to bend words to create patterns that made it unique to our genre specifically, which it seems like it's something that doesn't get any credibility. Uh, or people don't put a whole, not everybody put a whole lot into that. Now they don't give a lot of credence to that, you know, which is probably um, Slaughterhouse could have been a victim of that, um, that kind of ideology. Um, you also on this album, uh, you went- Before we get into the next person he gonna go at, and before we leave the Joe situation, that was a tough spot for Royce to be in. You know what I mean? Like 
Royce was in a tough, tough spot, man. And if this is what I would say, if I was Joe, man, and I'm cool with Royce, man, to go in like that, and you know that shit, that that puts that puts Royce in a tough spot because he's friends with both of y'all. And if you call that your homie, you call that your brother, then I wouldn't have done it. Even if I had harsh feelings about it, because if I felt some way towards M, I know if I went in on M like that, that would affect my brother. You know what I'm saying? And I wouldn't want to do anything to put my brother in a in a tough spot like that, in a, in a tough position, if I call him my brother or, you know what I'm saying? My friend. So to see that happen, I was like, ah, man, I, I just kept... I, I cringed, man, because because for Royce, bro, because I know that put him in a tough spot. Went in on MGK. You guys had a discrepancy. He mentioned it in his response song on Rap Devil. Mm -hmm. You know that. Let's call Sway and ask him why I can't get on Shade Four Five. That was in um, response. So I seen him on the street once, and I didn't know he couldn't come up to Shade at that time. Mm -hmm. Uh, four or five and I said man come on up man and then I had to see him again and say hey man I don't know what the shit is yeah but until that gets cleared up there's no way I can have you on there yeah what's the shit with that what happened well the shit is just for the record the the thing that was going on that he was saying about my daughter I didn't even know about that until like literally like a year and a half later okay I wasn't it just it never hit my radar and then one day, you know, you go down the fucking wormhole of YouTube and whatever, right? <laughs> so I see Machine Gun Kelly talks about Eminem's daughter, whatever, right? So what the fuck? Click on it. Like, yo, why is he? Then he starts doing a, a press run, basically, about Haley. I'm like, what the fuck? Yo, my man better yeah. chill, right? So that's not why I dissed him. The reason I dissed him is actually a lot more petty than that. Okay. The reason that I dissed him is because he got on. First, he said, first, first, when he said, I, I'm, the, I'm the greatest rapper alive since my favorite rapper banned me from Shade 45 or whatever he said, right? Like, I'm trying to hinder his career. So I give a fuck about your career. You think I actually fucking think about you? You know how many fucking rappers that are, are better than you? You're not even in the fucking conversation. I don't care if you fucking blow or if you don't blow. It doesn't matter to me. But then when you get on Tech 9s album and you start sending shots and people start hitting me up, yo, Machine Gun dissed you, he just dissed you, he dissed you. I'm like, I listen to it, I'm like, did he really diss me though? I keep listening to it. Yo, this rap, you're not gods. And then somebody sends me a screenshot of his Twitter and it says, had some shit to get off my chest. You just rap, you not God some shit like that and i was like a reference to the rap god song yeah yeah so i'm like on the song he said y'all just rap you not gods and on twitter he said you just rap you not god had some shit to get off my chest and i'm seeing and by the way this was on the heels of the freestyle he had just did about shade 45 it's like shut the fuck up shut the fuck up now now I'm in this fucking weird thing because I'm like, I got to answer this motherfucker. And every time I do that, it makes that person as, as irrelevant as people say I am, am in hip hop. Yeah. I make them bigger by getting. That's, that's another thing, man. <laughs> that word irrelevant, I think people just use it. I, I don't even think people know what that word means. Do you pay attention when Eminem drops a song or when Eminem drops a diss track? It's like literally breaking the internet. Everybody stops what they're doing. Everybody hits the pause button and everybody rushes to go listen to it. Like, it's insane. So what does relevancy mean? Or is it he's not in your face every day? He's not cut from that cloth. He doesn't come from that hip hop background where I got to hit you with 19 albums a month. Like some of these artists, like <laughs> I, exaggeration, but 
Like, you know what I'm saying? Some of these artists that put out insane amounts of music, he doesn't come from that. So the shift in the way t today people receive music and they receive so much of it, if you're not in their face like that, then they consider you irrelevant. It's, it's, it's crazy, man. It's crazy, but come on. We all know when he drops something, everybody stops and goes and pays attention. So getting into this thing where I'm like, I want to destroy him, but I also don't want to make him bigger. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because now you're a fucking enemy. So I'll leave it at that. I'm not sure exactly what I'm going to do at this point right now, because yeah. I'm still kind of waiting to see what. You haven't heard his rap double response? No, I heard it. What do you think of it? It's it's. Not bad for him. Mm -hmm. He has some good lines in it. Yeah, did y'all really call Interscope to try to shelve this? Fuck no. I I never made a fucking call, made a call to Diddy, really? Yeah. I got Diddy's number, just hit him up. Yo, Diddy, what up? Never happened. It didn't feel like a diss to me, it just felt like pitiful. Mm. Like, ah, oh, fuck. <laughs> now I'm, I'm feeling bad for something I didn't even have to do with. So that's how that happened. So he made a reply to my reply. So regardless of what the fuck he wants to say, oh, it was from six years ago, motherfucker. Shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck up. Wait. I'm telling you the reason I dissed you now. Yeah. I'm telling you. And I'm gonna sit back and I'm gonna wait for a second just to see, because if people start firing off, and I try to answer every fucking buddy that I dissed on Kamikaze or had words about, I'm gonna be going the next five fucking years <laughs> making diss song after diss song. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. like. You're gonna get hit though. <laughs> you gonna get hit though. Uh, nobody really crazily jumped out the window. Like and and I was I was on the edge of my seat like refresh 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 somebody 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 but um I really thought I really thought Joe would respond in a in a way but I think coming off of the Drake battle I think Joe kind of realized that he needed to fall back first and let somebody else come at him a little bit more because all he got really from M was like a line, like M said, he, he got that. So it was like, it was enough for Joe to be like, okay. But Joe wasn't going to strike first because in the Drake incident, you know what I mean? He struck first and Drake never replied and it made it look like Joe was super thirsty. Like he really wanted this. It just, it just looked bad for Joe, you know? So he was, Joe was sitting and waiting, but M was also sitting and waiting to see, cause like he said, if he went at everybody first, it was, it was gonna be a lot. It was gonna be a lot. So he kind of wanted to see who was gonna respond back and see how this was gonna go. And probably to see who was gonna come with the best. And I think he would have went at the best, you know? The more challenging, this I think he would have he would have loved to do but part two man part three is coming you guys requested all parts so we're gonna keep it going y'all get at me and let me know what y'all thought of uh part two and y'all feelings and the slaughterhouse glass house Joe Button MGK all of the things that was mentioned in this part y'all let me know how y'all thoughts and y'all's opinions man it's your boy L man Sh crazy it's crazy till the next reaction man i'm out peace y'all stay solid hey